What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to another episode of No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast. I am your host, Kyle Masters, as always. Going to be doing the SmackDown spoiler for you today. Um, jumping right into it, this was the debut of SmackDown on, on the USA Network, the same network as Monday Night Raw, so we are hoping for a huge SmackDown, to say the least. Um, jumping into it, the show opened with John Cena. I guess that's a good start. Um but it had the same old fake crowd noise. I do not understand why WWE chooses to do this. Give us this fake crowd noise. Just give us the live noise. I don't understand why you have to input this. It doesn't make any sense. Let's save that topic for another day. Uh, Cena comes out saying he wants a rematch against Alberto Del Rio for the U.S. title. Um, basically, as what he was saying on Monday Night Raw. Del Rio comes out and refuses and then nothing else. He ends up fighting Kalisto in a non-title match, which is the first match of the night. It was a quick match, but Kalisto wins? Are you serious? How do you have Del Rio come out and answer an open challenge from John Cena and then lose to Kalisto right after? I don't know why the hell ADR gets buried here. It just doesn't make any sense. I mean, he might as well have just faced John Cena in a non-title match. Why the hell did they squash? Why the hell did he get squashed to Kalisto? Or at least squashed Kalisto. I just don't understand how Kalisto just beat the United States Championship or the United States Champion, but he's not going to have a United States Championship match against him in the future. It's going to be John Cena against Upper Del Rio. Anyways, um, this really looked Del Rio made just made it look really bad. Like I don't understand what WWE's process was with this. Um, anyways, moving in, we had an, a, the first segment of the evening, Miz TV, um, which was quickly interrupted by New Day. Thank. God, I don't want to see another Miz TV segment. All he's been doing is bringing in mid to low carters on it and just been god awful. Um, but then it was all of a sudden interrupted by Ziggler, Goldust, R Truth, and Neville. Oh, what a clusterfuck, ladies and gentlemen. Oh my god. This ended up turning into an eight man tag team match. What else is new for SmackDown? Um, it was actually a pretty decent match. To say the least, I mean, this is Battle of the Mid Cards right here. Team Ziggler end up winning, which was Ziggler, Goldust, Neville, and our truth um, I guess to take anything out of this match, Xavier Woods is wrestling more. I guess that's a plus. Um, this is not a good start for SmackDown on USA Network. So far, I'm really bored, and this just looks like another episode of Main Event extended to two hours. Really bad. Going into match number three, the Divas title, I really expected to, for at least SmackDown to get a little bit better going on in the night. Um, this was literally the exact same match as Raw. What the hell, man? You had Ric Flair interfere, causing Be- Becky Lynch to get distracted and lose the match. Yay for the Divas revolution. Yay. Unbelievable. I cannot believe they had the same match for the Divas title. Like, do they have a rematch in the future? Like, that's really unclear. Uh, This was really poorly done. You can say now that Charlotte's fully healed, but oh my god, this was terrible. I I don't even know what else to say about this. Like, I thought this was the Divas Revolution. This was Divas crap. Moving into the main event. Yes, the main event. It's already the main event. Kevin Owens versus Dean Ambrose for the Intercontinental Championship. This was a wasted match. Yep, you heard it right. This was a wasted match. It ends up in a double count up due to them brawling on the outside of the ring. I don't find this acceptable as it did not further the rivalry in my opinion. It's basically the same crap we've already seen. Like, it didn't make the splash they were going for to make SmackDown huge on its debut on the USA Network. This was really, really poorly done. It was just the same kind of brawling shit that we've seen the last two weeks. And guess what? That's the end of SmackDown. That was the debut of SmackDown on Sm- on the USA Network. This is what they've been hyping for for the last month. This is what the first episode was. If this is a direction that SmackDown is going to go into for the future on USA Network, man, I bet you USA is shooting themselves right now. This is terrible. So overall, my opinion, roster for SmackDown needs to be better. In order to have... A really good show that you're going to hype so much on SmackDown, on the USA Network, you're going to need to have a better roster. This is where the brand splitting I've been talking about for months now needs to happen. If you're going to have that good of a SmackDown, you need a brand split. 
Like this basically was a two hour episode of main event or superstars for that matter. I'm just really surprised at the bad in ring product in <laughs> that was shown in this episode of SmackDown. Like Cena didn't even boost this episode whatsoever. Like he could have been not there and it wouldn't have made a difference. This was really bad. WWE, you really need to boost this up in order to continue and convince actually myself and other fans to keep watching SmackDown. I really give this show an 0.5 out of five stars. This was really, really poorly done. You guys really better pick it up next week or I'm just not going to watch SmackDown in general. I'm just going to be reading spoilers all for like the rest of the year until you make it better or you have a brand split. But other than that, guys, that was the SmackDown spoilers for you. Um, Please follow us on Twitter at WP, as well as subscribe to this channel, like the video, leave us your comments, do whatever you got to do. I'm your host, Kyle Masters, as always. This has been another episode of No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast, and that's it.